All right, boys and girls, I hope you're all having a lovely day. Okay, today, guys, I want to talk about the games that I've been playing in June. Okay, we have been playing lots of games in June, as always. Okay, and obviously, I want to tell you guys about them. But before we get into things, guys, I do want to know in the comments what games you've been playing this month. Okay, so do let me know in the comments what you've been playing. And also, guys, there's a couple of games that I just want to mention that I'm not going to go into detail about, but just feel like I need to tell you. Uh, first of all, we've been playing Mirror's Edge this month. I'm going to be doing a video on this game very soon, okay, which is why I'm not going to talk about it today. I did manage to finish that one, okay and again I will talk about that in a bit more detail later on and the other game as well I played this month was Burnout Paradise but again this will be a video at some point so that's why I'm not going to talk about it today. In terms of some other ones that I have been playing guys I've been playing a lot of Marvel games this month okay I'm working on a big Marvel video okay so there's a lot of Marvel games that I'm not going to get into. So yeah we've been very busy on the gaming front guys okay we've been playing lots of games this week uh, but I've got five games I want to talk to you guys about today so let's jump into it. Okay guys the first game I want to talk to you guys today about is going to be Guilty gear for the PS1. Now I'll be totally honest with you guys, I did not think this was a game that I'd be talking to you guys about today because I didn't really have plans to play it that much. Basically there was a day where I had about 20 minutes before I had to leave and I didn't know what to do for that 20 minutes so I thought, you know what, let me just put this on because I've had it in my collection for quite a while and I, I just thought I'd play it. I have played it before but I didn't really give it much of a chance. Like, I played a little bit of it and I just it just didn't really click with me. I just wasn't really loving it. I'm not like super good at fighting games. I really love Tekken but yeah, I'm pretty ass at every other like fighting game. Dude, you're not even doing it right. You're just mashing the buttons. So I did play this game before and I didn't love it that much. But I thought, you know what, I've got 20 minutes. Let's give it another chance. But within those 20 minutes, guys, I really had fun with it. Like, I honestly was having a really good time with it. So I decided to play it a bit more, you know, and I kept playing it, kept playing it. And I ended up spending a good few hours playing this one. Again, lads, I'm not, like, super good at fighting games. I'm pretty freaking terrible. But, yeah, I really invested a good amount of time trying to learn some, some combos and stuff like that. And I wouldn't say I got good at it. But, you know, I was at least somewhat, like, somewhat competent at it, you know? I knew that the controls to an extent, and I could do a few things with certain characters. One of the things I do invest a lot of time learning in this game, guys, is there's, like, an instant kill thing you can do in this game, where you have to, like, press certain buttons, and I can't exactly remember how you do it now, but you basically press certain buttons in a certain way, and you can instant kill your opponent. And that's not just a first round either. You win both rounds if you do this thing. It's, it's really cool. I probably spent a good few hours trying to perfect that move, okay? And I got pretty good at it, you know, I could do it really consistently and I had no problems doing it because I practiced on it so much. With that said though guys, it ended up being a little bit meaningless, okay, because even though I had spent all this time learning this mechanic, I don't know what it is, but I cannot land this, this move after a certain point because the game just gets so hard. This game is one of the hardest fighting games I have ever played, like punishingly difficult. And this game has no difficulty settings whatsoever, okay, you have to play this game on the base, like arcade difficulty and it is arcade difficult okay if you guys have ever played arcade fighting games you know what to expect here there's just certain opponents you cannot beat guys I'm telling you you're like you can try for hours and I did try for hours you can't beat them but you'd think like with me learning this instant kill move it wouldn't be a problem because I would just learn the move and instant kill but they block it every time I literally can't pull it off against certain opponents like if you're playing against Cliff in this game you can't beat him guys I you I, you, I can't beat him I, if I match against him it's over okay it doesn't matter where I am in the arcade mode I cannot beat Clef. I just can't do it. I can't take this shit no more. So naturally, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. I decided that I was going to main Cliff, okay? And I was going to learn how to use Cliff. And I got really good with Cliff. Like, he's the character that I always go to. But then you get to the final boss, okay? And the final boss is borderline impossible. I played this game for lots of hours, guys. I beat the final boss once. Just one time, and that was it. And I honestly couldn't believe it, guys. When I beat it, I was cheering. That's how fucking hard the final boss is. It is borderline impossible, I'm telling you. If you guys are good at fighting games, pick this game up and play it, okay? Because it will test you. But me, I just couldn't take it anymore, guys. I practice and practice and practice and I just couldn't do it. Like, I just couldn't get good at this game. And it's a shame too, because I really love the art style here, guys, okay? That's what drew me to this game, was that incredible 2D art style. I, I adore the way this game looks. But for the life of me, guys, I just couldn't get good at it, okay? I tried, but it didn't, it didn't work out, unfortunately. But still, I did have fun with it, okay? I pumped in a lot of hours into this game, had a good time with it, but I 
think I think I had to throw in the towel with this. I might come back to it, but probably not because it's so hard. Okay, guys, the next game I want to talk to you guys about is going to be Streets of Rage for the Sega Mega Drive. Okay, guys, if you follow the channel, you know that I picked this game up pretty recently. I obviously picked up the Mega Drive, and this was like the first game I bought for it. In fact, at this point, this is my only game I own for the Mega Drive. I have tons of nostalgia for this game, okay? I remember me and my older brother used to play it all the time when he had a Mega Drive, and we used to play it together. Oh, I just absolutely adore this game, guys. It's, it's just 10 out of 10 to me. It's pure nostalgia. I even had this super weird dream when I was a kid where I was actually in the Streets of Rage world in my dream and I got kicked in the nuts and then I woke up like obviously you know because I just got kicked in the nuts in my dream and my nuts were hurting so I must have like punched myself in the bollocks whilst I was dreaming so yeah it's a weird dream I had but uh, yeah that's how much nostalgia I've got for this game is I can even remember my dreams about it. So yeah when I got the Mega Drive guys I just really wanted to play it okay and I honestly thought that this would be like a five minute thing. I thought I'd play it get that little nostalgia buzz and kind of be bored with it after that but no guys I really really loved it I couldn't stop playing it I ended up getting a little bit addicted to it I ended up playing through the whole game guys and I really enjoyed it and I wanted to play it again guys so I put it in again I pumped up the difficulty because I did play it on easy mode because I honestly thought it would be super hard so yeah I started on easy mode but then I moved it up to normal I ended up playing through it on normal mode no problem and I really enjoyed that and then I even tried it on hard mode in my like games I played for an entire day video if you guys saw that video you know that I played this game we couldn't beat it on hard mode unfortunately but I gave it a good go guys and uh, yeah I just I just adore this game guys it's just it's not just nostalgia it's actually super fun trying to learn the different bosses in this game was super addictive to me just trying to learn like the best ways to beat them that was super enjoyable I love picking up pipes and beating them up with it I love grabbing people and doing fucking like I don't even know what it is. It's like a, it's like a slam backwards. I don't know what you call that in wrestling terms, but yeah, I just, I just adore this game, guys. It's so, it's so good. But I think the thing that I love about this game the most, guys, is got to be the music here. The music in this game, the soul, the whole soundtrack here, is 11 out of 10. It is one of the greatest soundtracks in a video game ever. I adore the soundtrack. <laughs> Yeah, if you somehow have never played Streets of Rage, guys, please play it, okay? It's genuinely one of the most iconic games of all time, and I definitely cannot wait to get Streets of Rage 2, because I'm going to play the crap out of it. Alright, boys, next up, I want to talk to you guys about Dead Space Extraction for the Nintendo Wii. Okay, guys, so I picked this game up pretty recently. I actually found it in a charity shop, so I was, like, really excited about that, because this is the only Dead Space game that I don't own. It is a game I have actually played before, but this was on the PS3, because uh, basically, if you had Dead Space 2 Limited Edition, if you put that game in it would uh, give you the option to play Dead Space Extraction for some reason. It was like two games in one. So I did play through this game back in the day when I had Dead Space 2 but I played it on the PS3 guys with like the PS3 controller and if you don't know this is like a light gun game and really you need to be playing it with like a motion controller. I think like when you play it on PS3 you, you really ought to have the PlayStation Move but I obviously didn't have one of those. So yeah I was playing it with the controller it just wasn't quite the same. So when I picked this game up for the Wii guys I was super excited to play it again because obviously again it's a light gun shooter so I want to be able to aim with the with the motion not to mention the fact that it's been a really long time since I played it I mean I played this game when I was a teenager so being able to play it again with the motion controls was super exciting yeah I've got to say guys I really enjoyed this one okay I was actually quite surprised at how good it was because obviously it's like a dead space spin-off on the Nintendo Wii like naturally you'd think it may be a little bit lazy you know maybe not as much effort has gone into it but no guys I'm telling you this game is as good out and like at least on par with the dead space series you know this is not an inferior game in any way I honestly think that this is a must play for any Dead Space fans. I genuinely think it's that good. But yeah, the atmosphere in this game, lads, was absolutely fantastic. Okay, this game had that classic Dead Space atmosphere. I wouldn't call it scary necessarily, or at least I wasn't scared, but it's definitely got that dark, creepy atmosphere to it. Shooting in this game was super fun. There's like several different guns and they all feel really nice. I think my favourite has got to be the Ripper, which is like the, the chainsaw thing. And just being able to like move the Wii remote and move the, uh, the Ripper blade, you know, through the different necromorphs. Awesome. Just absolutely your awesome gun. But I think the thing that surprised me the most about this game, guys, has got to be the story, okay? The story in this game is actually really good, and the characters here are really amazing, and I was quite surprised by that because I didn't expect it, honestly. So yeah, if you're a big Dead Space fan, guys, you should play this one, okay? Because not only is it a lot of fun, but the story and the characters were super good. So yeah, play it if you haven't already. Alright, boys, next up, let's talk about Catherine Full Body for the PS4. Alright, guys, so not gonna lie, this is a game that I have played before. This is not my first playthrough of this game. This is actually 
actually, I think it was my fourth playthrough of this game. I've beaten this game four times now. I've had this game for a very long time, okay, and it's easily one of my favorite games of all time. And I kind of just impulsively felt like playing it again. I was watching a YouTuber the other day. I can't even remember who it was now, but he was going through his PS3 collection and he picked out this game and he was just saying how good it was and it just made me want to play it again. I played the PS4 version, obviously, guys, because I don't even have the PS3 version. I did want it all, like, back in the day, but I was actually too scared to ask my mum for it. I was a teenager at the time and I didn't really have my own money, really. I wasn't old enough to buy the game either, so basically if I wanted to play the game, I would have had to have asked my mum, but the cover was just too, I don't know, out there for me to say, mum, can I have this game? Because I knew she'd look at me weird, like, why the fuck would you want that? And it would be too hard to explain. As, no, I, I promise, like, and even, even, it's, it, it was, it's been a weird, it's, these past few months. But anyway, when this game came out for the PS4, I got it straight away, okay? And I just love this game. Like, every time I play it, I love it even more. And if you've never played this game before, guys, you've got no idea what it is. It's basically a puzzle game where you have to move these squares in order to reach the top. And they'll throw various obstacles in your way, and it's super addictive, hence why I played it, like, four times. On top of all of that, guys, this game has a really weird and unique story, and it's one of those games that you probably shouldn't play if your parents are near you. You know that meme where you're watching something on TV, and then your mum comes in the room at the exact point of where she shouldn't be in the room watching and it's super awkward. I mean, that's pretty much the entire game here. If you're playing this game and your mum walked in the room at any point, she'd look at you weirdly. But that's not to say it's bad, guys, okay? The story here might be a little bit weird and a little bit out there, but it's really good, honestly. And the characters here are just wacky and odd, but I love them, all right? I love this game and I love its world. Also, what's awesome about this game, guys, is the different endings, okay? This game has so many endings. I've played this game four times. I've managed to get four different endings. On this playthrough, I went for the Catherine with a C ending, which is the, the blonde chick. I've never gone for that ending because I always looked at it as like the bad ending. But after playing this game, guys, I think it might be my favorite ending I've got. I don't even know how it's possible, but I feel like it's a really good ending for Vincent, which it surprises me because I just did not think that that would be, there would be any sort of good like endings regarding Catherine with a C. But yeah, to my surprise, it was a super good ending. So I'm glad I went for it. A mere human dares ask to wed the daughter of the plenipotentiary of the netherworld. Not in my house. You're his daughter? Get out of here, Daddy. I'm having an important conversation, okay? So this guy's your father. You got a problem? <laughs> Let's go home. You promised you'd play video games with me tonight. Okay, uh... So yeah, if you've never played this game before, guys, definitely seek it out, okay? It's a super weird game. It's made by Atlas, who made, like, the Persona games. If you're into Persona, it's obviously a lot different to that, but it is super good, and I definitely recommend it. All right, boys, the final game I want to talk to you guys about is going to be PsyOps for the PS2. Okay, guys, so this was a game that I sort of played towards the end of the month, so this was a game that I literally finished the other day. I wasn't really in the mood for anything, like, super deep. I kind of just wanted to shoot stuff, you know? You, like, do you ever get that feeling where you just want to play something that's completely mindless and you just go around shooting stuff. The PS2 is just perfect for that sort of game, you know? Like, the, the console just has so many games that are just mindless shooters, you know? So, it basically just went onto my PS2 shelf and I just picked out a whole bunch of them. I picked out this game, obviously. I picked out, um, I, I can't remember what it's called now, Warhammer Fire Warrior or something like that. It's like a first-person shooter. And then we had, what was it, what was it? We had Second Sight and the fourth game was called Project Snowblind, I think, okay? So, I picked out all four of these games and I basically just shuffled them and just picked out whichever game and this was the game that ended up getting picked. It was a whole, you know, I just sort of randomized it and lo and behold guys, is exactly what I wanted. You go around in this game, shoot people, use telekinesis and launch them off of different platforms and that's it. That's the whole game and I fucking loved it. It's just a super incredibly fun third person action game guys. It's not a super deep game. The story is kind of mid honestly. It's, it's not terrible but it's, you know, it's not got the best voice acting. Sarah. <laughs> Mom always did like me best. Bitch. Well, that was absolutely awful. But what you're in here for, boys, is that gameplay again. The gameplay just involves you going around and just messing people up, and it's super fun, all right? Telekinesis in this game is so fun. Not just, like, picking people up with telekinesis. That's super fun, but also being able to, like, mind control people in this game is super fun. You basically can, like, control other, like, enemies, you know, for a bit, so you can, like, hide behind cover, mind control them, and then you'll be controlling them, and then you'll shoot them, and uh, it's just super good, okay? It's, it's amazing. A little bit after 
after that as well, guys. You end up be learning this, like, firepower so you can set people on fire. This game just lets you fuck around, okay, with telekinesis and mind powers. It's super, super fun. With that said, though, guys, the fun does unfortunately come to an end with this game. Around about, sort of, three quarters of the way through it, okay? The first three quarters of this game are just literally exactly what I wanted. It's mindless. It's fun. It's awesome, okay? But the, when you get to that last quarter of the game, it turns on you, okay? This game turns on you. The difficulty spike in this game is one of the worst I've ever seen, okay? Because the game is pretty easy, you know, like for most of the game, and then it just spikes at the end for some weird reason. Then it went from just being one of the most fun PS2 games I've played to one of the worst experiences ever. The last quarter of this game was literally hell to play, guys, okay? It nearly ruined the entire experience for me. I, I nearly stopped playing it, but I obviously wanted to persevere and beat the game. But yeah, I was losing the will to live playing this last, like, few hours of the game. You're probably wondering what exactly was so annoying about this game, okay? And I'll tell you guys, okay? I'll tell you, okay? First of all, the game throws these annoying sort of mind aliens at you. I don't know what they are, but yeah, you're, they're sort of these mind aliens. It's not that bad, but they're just annoying. Like, there's just a lot of them, and you can't really do the sort of things you can do on regular enemies. Like, with regular enemy, enemies, you can just pick them up and throw them and stuff. With these guys, they just, they come at you in bunches, and they're just super annoying. So that was the first thing, but that wasn't like, that wasn't game breakingly annoying, you know, I could live with that. The second thing though, guys, was unforgivable, okay? So basically, you've got these enemies that have got like anti-psychosis armor, so you can't like pick them up with telekinesis, you can't mind control them, you can't use any telekinesis on them at all, except for the fire. The fire works on them, but that's it. And it's not super effective against them either. You pretty much have to shoot these guys, okay? They were annoying, but what's even more annoying is the ones that have got rocket launchers, okay? So you can't use telekinesis on them, and they've got rocket launchers. And these rocket launchers launchers are so fucking irritating because basically when you get shot with these rocket launchers you ragdoll into the air at 100 miles per hour it's so annoying when it keeps happening guys I'm telling you and it's just like I was losing my shit with these rocket launcher guys because there's just so many of them in the last parts of this game and it doesn't stop and if that's not enough guys if that's not enough to make you want to break your controller you have these like mind trip mind things that you can only see with a certain vision um, and if you walk into them it just you know you'll just be walking around normally if you walk into them you fucking explode naturally and it's honestly pretty hard to avoid them especially when you are ragdolling in the air from these rocket launcher guys. It's just a whole clusterfuck and a whole recipe for making you want to break stuff, okay? And this last hour of this game was filled with this shit. And oh my god, I wanted to fucking kill somebody. Get the fuck out of my sight before I demolish you. It very nearly ruined this game for me, guys. Because like I said, I really enjoyed it up to that point. It was so fun up to that point. But fucking hell, it was not fun that last few hours. With that said, though, guys, I still enjoyed this game again. I still would recommend it despite that annoying cheesiness towards the end. It's a good game. It's just fun from perfect unfortunately okay guys so that is all the games i've played this month okay a nice nice variety this month okay we've literally got different consoles for every single game we got ps1 we got mega drive we got wii ps4 ps2 really nice variety this month but yeah like i was saying before guys do let me know in the comments what games you've been playing other than that though boys and girls subscribe here if you're new and i'll see you guys next one all right peace